So for a little background into this story, really, uh, myself and partner in crime Sylvia Wicks, we headed across the border in 2008 towards the end of the year. We're asking to share to Derbyshire, in fact in the very city of Derby, we had an interview with physical medium Dean Kenyon. Dean, Sylvia and myself, we had a, an in-depth discussion and conversation discussing the aspects of mediumship and physical mediumship, beginning with what goes into the preparation of an even a demonstration of physical mediumship, his personal philosophies and ethics. We discuss the role of a medium in today's society, looking back across the eons in history and often how a seer, those with the gift of foresight, were often and always at the right hand of the leaders, and how their decisions impacted the actions of rulers. And what roles there could there be in the potential coming future in the evolution of mankind? What comes across very well in the interview with Dean, he's very knowledgeable, he's a grounded individual, and he also and quite refreshing to my mind is he's very critical and very skeptical even of himself. He himself is an electrical engineer and a scientist in his employment roles and he understands the need and the drive for evidence which really is a refreshing breath of fresh air. He encourages the requirement of a healthy level of skepticism even if you're a believer or not. It also includes in the interview what he thinks ectoplasm is, how it works, and where it comes from and where it goes, in quite some, quite some detail actually. He's a follower of the late great Carl Sagan, as extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, as he once famously said, and he discusses some of the views aimed at mediums by skeptics. He explores also working with scientists and encouraging experiments to discover what truly is occurring. So please listen to this interview to the end, it's a fascinating and revealing interview with the physical medium, Dean Kenyon. For those who don't know, can you explain what you as a medium is and what they do? Yes, um, the only thing I can go off is my personal experience. Uh, I understand that mediums uh, work, have uh, been introduced to mediumship in their own way, either because they were born into a family that believed, um, you know, and obviously regularly attended a spiritualist church. Um, Spiritualism for me, um, although I, I was raised Church of England, I could see dead people. Um, that was something that, um, as I grew up, uh, I assumed everybody else could, or uh, I had um, an affinity. I could see an object, and it had an energy on it, and which I thought there was something wrong with me. Uh, when I reached my early teens, I thought, oh, perhaps there is something wrong. And then I'm just going through my early phases of how I developed. And then until I started predicting, until I started seeing things in the future, that's when spirit got my attention and said there was a lot more to this. So, no, mediumship is, um, its exact term, and I'll try and be as clear as I can, is you as a catalyst, as an interface, for communication from one form to be heard by people in a room. That's exactly what it is. It could be trans, physical, mental mediumship. That's all it is. That's what that term means. Yeah, the medium of? The medium. Like a radio. You can't see the radio waves, but you know they're there because it comes out the speaker. So that's exactly, and we tune in exactly like a radio. Okay, so you are a physical medium. Now, could you explain what being a physical medium is? As opposed to the mental. I'll yeah. take those two separate. Yeah. Okay. Mental mediumship is the, the clear senses, the, the voice, the audience, the sentience, the seeing, the hearing, and the, the feeling, the presence of spirit. Although, subjectively, we see them in our mind, that's when we can describe to a sitter or uh, in front of a group of people what we're seeing, what we're feeling, what we're uh, what we're hearing from spirit, and we give the evidence of who they are, evidence of the person. Um, that is the primary um, role of the medium, and um, and as long as you keep to that evidential side, then you're doing, uh, in my opinion, you're doing it correctly. Now, the difference between that and physical where, is whereby um, it over a long period of time, um, just need to tell you that some physical circles have been going for 45 years to perfect 
the art of physical mediumship, whereby the medium, the physical medium, is sat in seance conditions. What I mean by that, a darkened room, subdued lighting, this medium is usually taken into a, a state of trance, might not be too deep, but they're, they're in an altered state, and the sitters, these are the people who are invited into the seance room, are there to sort of channel this energy, this spiritual energy, this energy from, we call it from spirit, um, however you see God, and uh, is channeled towards the, the medium. And then ectoplasm, um, it's either liquid, gas, sometimes people can see the ectoplasm, other times it can be invisible, and that's when spirit can directly interface and make noises, uh, produce sound, so that not just one person, but everyone in the room can hear the same thing. That's the important thing. So everybody in the room can witness the same event, the phenomena. Because then that essentially, um, you are, also, uh, you duplicate it. Everyone has exactly the same experience. So you right. verify each other. I heard that, you heard that. That's, That's right. That's amazing. That's right. Although there are some, sometimes we get slight variants where people see light. Some people may be more sensitive to light in dark conditions than others. Yeah. But that's normal. What I'm saying is when a physical circle is well developed, it, um, you see, everybody sees the same thing, feels the same thing, you hear the same thing. And, um, and usually on a very, very good physical circle, you will get the voice of the loved one speaking directly in the accent, the vocabulary that the medium knows nothing about. Okay. So, according to the SNU website, there are many forms of physical mediumship. That's right. As you've just been talking about, like direct voice, apportive, the ectoplasm, the independent voice, which is in the room but not coming from the medium, okay. levitation, materialization, percussion, transfiguration. So, um, obviously, what you've described a few seconds ago, are these typical of what happens in the circles that you host? Or you are the medium of the circle? Uh, yeah. Um, to take. My, my group's only been running for three years, uh, so we're a baby group if you compare it to some of the, the, the groups that have been operating in all of the world in physical condition, uh, physical mediumship uh, conditions. And although we are now getting apparently life phenomena, I obviously I get reported about what happens, um, taps and bangs and so on. They do get, uh, people feel as though there's a presence in the room, either they get touched or something by, by someone in spirit. Now, as they develop, the, the best form of physical mediumship, in my opinion, is um, hearing a voice in the middle of the room from your loved one, and also being, uh, and, and then building up a spirit body from from ectoplasm, and then them touching you, and then communicating with you directly, which I think is wonderful. Well, you mentioned you a very good thing, obviously, uh, what happened with Helen Duncan. Yes. Um, that 1941, there was a seance in Portsmouth, where I believe it was the HMS Barnum, and one of the sailors appeared. That's right. And obviously then, uh, everyone, every sitter saw that. That's right. Obviously, he then spoke, and he said that the ship's gone down. And then at the end, I think it was a little bit later in the October, she was actually arrested for understanding and knowing war secrets, and actually locked her up for that. And that's pretty much what you're saying there, is when someone physically appears. Yes. Uh, it, yeah, and um, just to, on, on that particular uh, incident, is that um, because of uh, media control, the government had to control the information to the public in order to rally the war cause. Support, yeah. The support. And, um, of course, a lot of the information was suppressed so that, you know, uh, the public saw us be victorious, yeah, victorious and so on. But that wasn't always the case. There was many disasters as well. And, of course, when um, the um, government and the police and so on felt that she was undermining the security, but also is that, um, in their eyes, she was a risk of giving secrets and, yeah, and so on. I had to do something. But she, she was right. She, the information she was giving, no one else could have possibly known 
apart from the officials that were there that arrested her. And I believe, I think that was at West Bridgeford when she was arrested. In Nottingham. Yeah. In Nottingham. Which, um, and, um, you know, and that just shows you that there's no way she, sh she could have known that. Somebody maybe a skeptic might say that she did know and somebody leaked the information. But when a sailor stands in front of you, the exact description, and uh, you know somebody might be able to describe them. Yeah, because I think all the sisters actually saw HMS Barnum on the camp. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's that was the one most thing they all talked about was that. That's correct, and and that of course, me, uh, physical mediumship has had a, shall we say, in the pa um, has been. Uh, was going to che say checkered. Yeah, I was thinking checkered. Checkered. Is that yes. kind of word you're looking for? Yeah, either the you know it's a five buses and all they're all frauds. So they're using items, you know, electronic devices, electrical devices, and then when it, when it does happen for real, somebody will find something else wrong with it. Yeah. So it's you yeah, know. The, yes, that's right. <laughs> um, but that one, with the Helen Duncan um, trial and um, her exper the experience of everyone who was there, that was amazing. But obviously, it was a tragedy for Helen, but it was a start to spiritualism. Yeah, that, that I think it was very a, important. Part I think it was a, a, was a rebirth to the people when they had that kind of information coming through. That's right. So, I mean, we talk about exoplasm there. So, there's a number of pictures taken of exoplasm. Yeah. Uh, most of them are quite old, most are black and white. Yes. Quite few on the S SNU website. Um, so, what, what kind of substance is exoplasm? If you could describe it to someone who doesn't quite understand what exoplasm is or what it is, right. how it works, how would you describe what exoplasm is? Right. Uh, I've asked this question of various physical mediums, and this is what we think it is. This is what it is. It is the I hope I've got this right, because there'll be some medical person out there that'll be um, wondering. It is the cytoplasm of the cells of the body that forms the liquid, actually the bulk of the liquid, um, that is somehow extracted from the cells of the body and then is exuded from various places of the body depending on the medium and spirit controller. Uh, <clears throat> and then, um, but we've had various scientists in the past, notable scientists, that have asked permission to analyse the content of ectoplasm and they've seen things like uh, sodium, uh, some I was going to say potash, but that potash, that does, that, that's weird. Um, but the exact composition says it, um, it we, we, hold, we heard from a guide that it's the cytoplasm from the cells of the body. Um, now, some, one scientist famously, and I can't remember the medium that they weighed, put them on very accurate scales and measured and weighed the medium before um, and uh, during and after uh, the removal of that. I think I did actually read about that. Uh, yes. And the weight dropped quite considerably. Quite considerably <laughs> during the manufacture of ectoplasm. But of course it goes back into the medium's body. There's always a loss, a small loss, which the medium tends to drink plenty of water afterwards. Yeah. So, so I think that's, that's kind of leads on to the next question really is how do you prepare for a physical event? Yes. Such as a circle or demonstration. Yes. Um, to help me with the, um, to settle down is obviously uh, forget about the rigours of the day um, and uh, really clear my mind of uh, pressing issues uh, um, of what I have to do like the following day. So it's really just getting to a nice um, calm state, plenty of um, rest. I drink plenty of water as well which I drink uh, one hour beforehand, I drink about, um, about about two pints of water, which I make sure this is, I've drunk an hour before my sitters arrive, and they usually find me lay on the settee relaxing, and that's listening to music to get me to a really calm state. Um, I get a little bit um, hazy, um, a little bit uh, daydreamy, so as long as they don't ask, ask me very technical questions, I'm fine. And then I walk upstairs and, and lie down, and spirit take over. They put me into a, a, an altered state, 
although I can find my way into the sounds room quite easily, I'm soon out of it. I can't hear any of the sitters when I sit in the cabinet. So, uh, and that's how it is for most of the uh, most of the sales. The um, during the day, I don't. I personally don't eat anything. Um, I have my lunch at midday, and then that's it. I can't eat anything else. If I have something big to eat, even a couple of hours before the sounds, it will come back out. <laughs> it will. Uh, so I. I that's I, I, a memory. That's yes. a memory. That's right. Yes, it is. <laughs> Believe me, it is. But sitters can eat. Yeah, well, I choose not to. <laughs> yes, but sitters can eat. They can eat, but um, um, but that's how I prepare. And I'm, as soon as I'm in, I'm, I, it feels as though I'm going to sleep. I used to worry about that, and they said, "But no, that's quite normal. You're actually we're taking you out." But that's part of the plan, right? Really. Yes. So I mean, uh, you cannot eat normal. Right? So how, how long does it take you to recover from doing the sales? So yeah, if they taken ectoplasm out of me, uh, sometimes I'm aware it's coming out, it's usually out of my mouth, you'd all be very pleased to hear, but it has come out of my ears, which, um, and it's an icy cold liquid when it does that, it drives me insane, but when it's coming out of my mouth, I can feel it go back in, which, um, it feels very, very strange, and um, that takes a while to get used to, um, I have to wait whilst it is reabsorbed into my body, it feels like I've got an extra set of lungs because I can feel it being pumped up through my throat and out. And sometimes you'll hear it fizz and then it'll go back down my throat again and when they've finished with it. So to prepare, to, the recovery is all dependent upon how much ectoplasm I've formed uh, from my body. So, um, and it varies, depends what experiments our guides want to perform and how much ectoplasm there is. Um, so uh, I sometimes I come straight back and I'm quite healthy and I'm happy. Yeah. Other times it feels as though I've um, had a very, very, very bad runny nose and I've just swallowed a load of it and it takes me ages to recover. Um, I'm so pleased it comes out of my mouth and not some other orifice which some mediums can produce. Yeah, I like that. Plasm, yeah. Some produce through the skin pores which feels like um, like a billion spiders crawling all over it apparently. So I'm glad I've got my, um, you know, you your trained. I've got my <laughs> trained from my mouth, yes. So, um, you regularly conduct tiptology. Yes. Um, just table tip and tilt yes. etc. So can you explain what tiptology is to Yes I can. Um, this is not to be confused with uh, Ouija board, um, which I'll explain the two, which I'll, I think this is well with yeah, some, somebody in a glass table. Yeah, the glass, glass divination I think it's called. That's right, yes. Um, this is in my opinion again, uh, whereas uh, the tiptology that I've done is that um, the energy that's required to, to animate the table is, is provided by you, the people in the room, and obviously by me as the medium and uh, the energy channeling person. Also the energy in the room as well, so the room has to be correct. Uh, and what I mean by that is um, it has to be a nice room, um, it doesn't have to be tastefully decorated, but as long as there's been no stress or uh, you know, any problems in the So the atmosphere has to be has right to just right. Um, the um, energy then is um, psychic energy is then channeled into the table and what happens is that then spirit have a way of animating the table by moving the atoms of the table, the wood, uh, for it to move. Um, they can command it, um, they can manipulate material. Now, we talked about physical mediumship and what you can do with this wonderful ectoplasm. So moving the table is a walk in the park, <laughs> <or> walk <laughs> in the park yeah. really. And um, and once this happens, they uh, although it's rather limited in response, we obviously keep to yes or no. Um, mediums in the room that know who it is, who link in, can see the soul, see the spirit that's moving the table, and obviously can assist with the message, yeah. obviously the that's evidence that's is quite profound. Um, the table, um, of course, uh, my guide, which is my grandfather, 
is the main controller of the table. Here I have to say he's the bouncer. He's the one that checks that the soul is safe, um, is not mischievous, and whoever it is is the person that wishes to communicate. And is and we don't mind people asking test questions. We want you to do that. That's not a problem. Um, and I'm the one responsible for the social uh, and you know and for the group that's around the table. And of course, if there's any misbehaving, I can stop the circle at this end. Yeah. So it's not a problem. Um, the difference between that and Ouija, uh, Ouija board is, um, again, it's a, a valid communication device. The only problem is that you are the controller. You are the gatekeeper. You're the one that knows if a spirit is um, mischievous or not. But as we all know, people who play with Ouija boards haven't got a clue. And not trained. So what? Typically, if I can go slightly right. So, with your grandfather, he essentially wants the filter. Yes, but that's right. table for your safety, the safety of everyone there, and obviously helps someone to come through, and obviously right. lines them up, get an orderly queue, and come through. Yes. Um, with a Ouija board, a spirit board, yep. essentially, because you don't know who's coming through, the first person that communicates with is you. And that's yes. you. I ask as many times when I know people who've played with them, and they just let go of the table and run away because something just happened. Yeah. What do you expect to happen? Yeah, well, that's right, yeah. The, the thing is, is that a board is a like a telephone. Um, and it's exactly like a telephone. It's a device to communicate not, with not just one particular realm, but many realms, many energy forms. So the, the medium, um, if there is a medium that was going to use a board, which they shouldn't need to, but if there is, they must be very advanced mediums that can block a mischievous spirit, and they're the ones that are active, controlling, like, uh, responsible for the safety of the use of the board, and, and, and also checking that the spirit communicates who they say they are. Yeah, because obviously, they say that um, uh, demons, as it were, tell, tell tricks, tell lies. That's right, yeah. Anybody. Shall we say, um, spirits of dubious yeah, uh, quality, I don't yeah. Um, they, it obviously, because it passes through all realms, it's, it's like a, a, a device, it's like a thin line that goes from the highest to the lowest, you, you name it, and, and anywhere in between. And this is how a medium, an advanced medium, must know what level that the board has opened out to. And obviously, depending on who's around the board, will affect its position within that level. But the medium should be able to control the who's coming through can yeah. say yes or no to them. Uh, so therefore, when people make a board up, either a divination table or a, a, a board, a, a spirit on their own, yeah. they have no idea what they let themselves in for because it is assumed you know what you're doing. And yeah. of course we know they don't. Mediums are those who have contact with spirits, as, as I wrote here, most about shamans, witch doctors, druids, wickers of all England, priests, etc. Yeah. Um, they are used to be the principal advisor of the king or of the ruler to feel like good advice and put the way they think they're going to take the, um, the, the, the kingdom as it were next and what decisions you should make, where should you farm. Um, so taking that vision forward, um, what, what do you think the role is for mediums in our realm of civilization today? <coughs> yes, um, there are various roles, some really good, some not so good. Um, it's, um, we, oh, this is going to be an awful word. Um, I hate supply and demand, the words, but um, if there's a role for a medium, there'd be someone to fill it. The possible roles for a medium, although many people will not admit to it, especially in people of power, or powers of positions of responsibility, some of them, well, quite a few of them, do in fact seek uh, mediumship, uh, and they call seek a psychic, which I hate, but... Um, they, I mean, many famous people have always had a contact. Look, okay, there's an interesting story that Diana always was very much a... Uh, very much so, yes. Yeah. That's right. Um, but, so that will always be there, uh, and we hope that they approach decent professional mediums and not uh, some uh, backstreet psychic, um, you know, wanting money. Uh, people who do this seriously for, um, you know, for the the well-being, of not only for the sitter, but those in spirit as well. Uh, the other areas that I see this uh, branching out into, um, it, it actually requires some belief, faith of the police, so, um, 
police organisation, the police uh, police force, where you've heard of many famous um, crime, what well, many crimes I should say, have been resolved, certainly brought to a conclusion with the use of a medium when all of the methods have failed, and America seems to be quite hot on this this trail. Although there are many skeptics, which is fine, a medium, a healthy medium, but like a healthy skeptic. Yeah. So the medium, then it's up to the medium to bring forward more information to help the police. Yeah. Um, this is where it gets interesting because the police have to approach the medium first, yeah. not the medium going to the police. That's right, you often hear stories about how there's like for every murder inquiry there's a thousand mediums on the phone. On the phone, yeah. that's right. Um, which is very embarrassing really. It wastes police time also and, and it makes us look like a bit of crackpot and what have you. But every so often you get one that is approached and does actually give you, um, give the police a new angle to another part to to, to in investigate. Yeah. And lo and behold, it's the path that they should have that they should follow. Of course, the police still do the legwork, have of to course, get the yeah. evidence. Because they have to present it. They have to present it in a court of law. And although judges generally are fine with it, providing there's a lot of evidence to back up, yeah. um, we have to still be careful because the defence, quite rightly, will find things wrong with it. Yeah. But that is something that the courts and obviously the, the law will look into at some other time. But... Um, so that's part on the, the investigation side of things. Um, the other part of this is, um, although I, I will mention this, is remote viewing and astral travelling. Remote viewing is, this has already been done in governments around the world course, yeah. during the war, during the Cold War. It was used as a weapon, as a spy network, to spy on the enemy. Um, now, a, a well-trained medium that's uh, astral travel, remote viewing, although the two separate things, remote viewers are very, very good indeed to help trace uh, a, a lost loved one or something. And, and no doubt it's probably used by a government somewhere, um, but po possibly to help out on more local issues, more local things, and uh, which is like um, but remote viewing is still very, very important, and I think as also as part of the message yeah. to a sitter, they could, although, I've got to be careful here, I've got to separate this from psychic, a remote viewer will be able to go to your house immediately yeah. and tell you what's going on right now, Yeah. okay, by looking and sketching and describing what either your partner is doing, um, you, what you know, somewhere where you, where you've been, yeah, or what is in the here and now, or yeah. where you're going, yeah, that's where, yeah, a, a psychic would typically would pick up on information recorded on you, or, yeah, or yeah, a thing. So a remote viewer, properly trained one, would be able to look at somebody. Doesn't matter where they are in the world, they could be known, they can link in. Yeah, astral travelling. It's whereby a medium, and this is where it gets a little interesting, astral travel is whereby they not only meet your loved one in spirit, but they also can go back in time and forward in time before the prediction thing comes up here. In churches, it's not classed as proper mediumship to predict, and, you know, and it's, um, and there's a sort of... We're talking about spiritual churches, here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, however, astral traveling sometimes we see events, major events that will happen in the future, and I'm not, I'm, I'm one of possibly thousands and thousands of people who keep this to themselves, but have recorded, I've got a journal of events that have happened way before they have actually happened. Six months is usually my, uh, is my limit, I can yeah. see it's six months ahead. That's only, I don't get that as many now because I'm working on the clear sense work, but astral travelling is something, is a discipline that needs to be trained with meditation, needs to be honed in. So, I mean, I think someone explained to me once how uh, remote viewing essentially takes your mind there, but 
Yeah. National Rejection takes your body there. Yes, it does. Uh, but it, yeah, your friend is absolutely correct there. Remote viewing, I can take my mind and describe everything that you'll have done in your house or whatever, what needed doing. I can sketch something and possibly write out what you wrote in a letter as well, if I have, if I get yeah. trained correctly. Um, and an astral traveller is that they become the person, either seeing through the eyes of someone who's in spirit. <coughs> sometimes we see nice things, well, many of the times we see nice things, <coughs> but sometimes we see not so nice, like the murderer, yeah. through the eyes of the murderer, through the eyes of the victim, and we can actually describe if the relationship of any of the two. Um, an astral traveller can glean a lot of information, and obviously with the guidance of their guides and protectors and so on, um, can be incredibly accurate about what they see. This includes visitings, visiting places, a house, an apartment, could be anywhere in the world, at any time in the world, which is amazing. And the astral traveller has to have training in order to sketch or to write things down and describe exactly what they well, not only what they've seen, but what they've heard, what they've tasted, what they've smelt, what they've felt, everything. All the senses kick in in astral travel mode. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. It's like me sitting here, you know, and me sitting here astrally, um, you know, it's like it's that real. I can sense the temperature, but I can also sense what you're thinking. It's very, very tuned in. It's a very sensitive way of communicating. Right, okay. um, I appreciate we touched on this earlier, like a, like a nicky, like a telephone on the line. Yes. Um, when I was going to, when I first approached you to do an interview, um, a chap I know called Jason Day, he, he suggested a question I should ask you. And that's, do you see a time in the future where there'll be a technology where anybody can actually talk to somebody essentially has passed on or in the future in the past? Yes, um, and I, I, I'm the electronics engineer. So, um, and I, uh, is it Jason? Jason Day. Yeah, yeah, he's um, completely correct. And I, Thomas Edison, who's of course people would know the famous um, American scientist who invented the light bulb. He was a, 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 a good spiritualist as well. Had very, uh, he believed in the presence of uh, life um, surviving bodily death. And he, um, and he of course, he, he produced a, a piece of equipment which obviously um, didn't work, but he wanted to pursue that side to get the must. He thought there must be a way, electronically, electrically, to communicate with spirits. If they're there in energy, then surely the other piece of equipment that's sensitive enough will be able to pick the presence of spirit. Now, um, there have been occurrences where television sets have picked up a face, yeah. somebody. So it is possible. But to answer to Jason's question is, I believe that, yes, it is possible. If um, I don't know what sort of sensitivity an amplifier has to be, uh, certainly to amplify the amplitude of the signal, but it's finding the signal in the first place. That's right, because like, you know when your TV is on static, essentially, That's right. it's receiving, um, they say, the information of the Big Bang or whatever, yeah. everything, everything. Is, everything is going through. But obviously, for split seconds at a time, you're hearing words and voices come through. Yeah, that's like, right. Through all the time, when you sort of just say, well, it's on pussy. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's literally, uh, it's receiving everything. So there must be a device, again, tuning it. But it's where do you tune it? Yeah. Where where do you start? Is it the gigahertz, terahertz? Is the one above that? Yeah. What is it? What, you know, what are we doing? And what is it? And um, are there other signals that we've never heard of yet, that scientists, because they can't see it, they don't believe it exists, would it take a spiritualist, uh, electronics engineer, to, to say, well, it does, because this is your, you know, I, I can prove it, or I hope to one day. Uh, if you had a piece of equipment that could do that, that would be amazing. It's, it's very good that you say it, because I was reading an article quite recently by Albert Einstein, and someone sent him a letter about dowsing, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it, it basically, it's, it, I can't remember what the exact words were, but it's the effect of what, what do you think about dowsing, what kind of energy field does it use? And Einstein's response was, well, I don't, I don't disbelieve it, 
although it's because it's highly likely there's an energy form which is creating that effect to be. It's just we haven't got a device which currently senses or sure. measures it yet. Yeah. But it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I think that, um, and, and send me back to the question from Jason, I think he's, um, he's, he's asked a very good question. A lot of, um, shall we say, professional organisations, military and otherwise, have a belief, know it exists, but, you know... Um, how do you pursue it without you, looking yes, in the wrong place? Yes, I would love to be part of a team that would scientifically look at it and and say, well, this is the energy, this is it, and um, it'd be wonderful to investigate that. I would love to do that um, because I'm fascinated in all of that. Oh, so you're in the right line of work, is that? Well, <laughs> yes, yes. But as I say, Einstein and uh, many of the scientists, of course, are asking the same questions. Well, when they were here. I still course. continue to work in spirit with various mediums, carrying on with the experimentations. Of course, they're aware of a lot more now. Than yeah, they are. So there's loads of things on the other side we haven't got yet. That's yeah. right. Because everyone says it's like um, when you get an idea, it's spirit giving you the idea to create it. Yeah, they, they do. There's some people. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, it could be inspirational. It could be you know you get a message. You think yeah, why not? I think of that before. Yeah, it gets so obvious. <laughs> so obvious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I've seen many a time where I've had a message or communication from somebody who's actually alive. Yeah. These people uh, don't have to be spiritually aware at all, but there is a way of linking to someone who's very much alive, um, is physically here, and you can communicate with them directly Okay, to their subconscious part and will communicate. I believe that I see you sat there as um, Christian, and I see you sat there with your energy, but I know there's a soul there, obviously, listening to me, but a part of you is already in spirit, yeah. which is capable of doing some remarkable things. And it's that, I can the over-self, I call them, that I can communicate to. I know I can ask questions on how you're feeling. Um, what happened to you in the past, what you're listening to, uh, what is your view on life, that, that over-self, that part of you that's in spirit, will be able to communicate with me on that. So, you, like, with that, uh, regards to, like, those who've passed on, so to speak, yeah. when I'm still talking to them, so they're out of time, you think it's the higher self, which is continuing to exist and then talk with everyone. Yeah, um, the higher self, these are the people... All right, uh, let me just have a got this... The I've understood you. I'm talking about people who are already here. Right. Yeah, physical. But like you, yeah. right here, I can still communicate with you with this other part of you that's in spirit. When I see you, I see a soul, obviously, there yeah. that's living there. But also there's a part of that soul, there's another part of you that's connected to spirit, that's connected in spirit world, it's that I can communicate to. Okay. okay. Oh, and so I'm, I'm actually communicating to Christian that is more evolved than the Christian I'm seeing right now. And there's a lot more about you than you can possibly oh, know about that's yourself. That's right, yeah. Because they... That, uh, you won't get this on tape, but... Imagine a cone, a, a, a massive funnel, that goes up as... It, it, there's no end to the, the, the opening of the cone. And um, this is probably... A, I may have used a, a, a bad example here. But right... The, very, very extremes of the cone is God, however you see God, the, the creator, the, the, the universal spirit, you know, the, the, the creator. And then right at the very tip of the cone is us, okay? And we're marching along like this every second into the future. If there's a guide, the, the further up the wall of the cone they are, the further forward they can see in time. Oh, right, okay. Okay. You can see that kind of perception. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So if they're about above here, you draw a line to that, that's how far they can see. Okay, so the higher you go in the pound, the further. With us, um, we can see aspects, there's still part of us that can yeah. see ahead. Okay, and I believe that the higher our soul is taken into spirit and is developed, um, the more you can see in the future. I don't no, I, 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 get, I get where you're coming from. I can see yeah. the mental image. Yeah. That, so. And, and so, therefore, communicating with somebody who's already alive, people just can't seem to grasp that, that that is totally correct. You can do that. If someone is sceptical around mediumship, uh, yeah. what, what is your, what's your response? 
Fantastic. Will you bring me a healthy, good, old-hearted skeptic any day? I think it's a breath of fresh air. True mediumship is a medium that gets the information, the evidence, and communicates this, but is not afraid of checking themselves and checking the information. And you, you've, you know, even these mediums, that, these professional mediums, mediums that go on television, have to do a check saying, you know, am I not, you know, am I okay, am I okay to work? And I find conversations with, with skeptics, um, although challenging, I find them invigorating because many of them will say it's, um, you, you're just intelligent and you've guessed what's happening in a person's life. And what you're doing is you're looking at the person's face and making a, a, a relative from the genetic code, whatever you what listening to the accent and everything, and you can imagine what the parent or the grandparent is. I've had them all. I've had all these questions. And I say, fine. Uh, well, that doesn't happen with me, but perhaps you've seen it somewhere else. It's when I get your address, telephone number, registration number, your date of birth, and friends that you lived with many years ago. That's when it will stump you. Um, and usually they say, well, do it now. And I say, well, I can't. Because uh, this is not a reading, you, we're just having a questions and answers session. So uh, if you asked me for a reading and gave you that information, then I'd like to know what your point of view would be. So usually they go quiet. Sometimes they issue you with a challenge to try and dis, um, you know, disprove you. Um, but many times people, they've gone out and said, well, that was good. And that was it. You know, don't congratulate. They don't want a question. They don't no, want, that's right. But then that's fine. People, I, I, I'm of the opinion, is uh, be yourself. It doesn't matter if you're atheist, um, any religion. It doesn't matter to me what you are. You're a human being. You've got feelings. You know, you're intelligent. That's it. I don't mind being questioned. It doesn't bother me. I want you to do it. It doesn't bother me whatsoever. I've got evidence. I know where I'm going. I've seen that the amount of things I've seen, there's no way uh, I, I doubt what I've seen. And everything I've been shown has come true. Uh, so, yeah, I bring on the skeptics. I have no problem with them whatsoever. Okay. So, one of my first conversations that I actually had with you was you spoke to me about a number of charlatans who are in the yeah. mediumship and um, those posing as a psychic. So, what do you think about those who are in, in on the act, as it were? Yeah. Um, there's, there's a few reasons, and it's very sad when this happens. Physic we're talking about physical mediumship, yeah. are we? Yeah, um, physical mediumship is uh, amazing to see when it's done properly, and, um, and I, I know many physical mediums that do do it properly. Uh, they're pr they're, they are serious about what they do. They work very closely with their guides, help us and inspire us, and have a dedicated team of sitters. Um, however, every so often, and this includes famous physical mediums, uh, there have been many cases where they've been caught moving a trumpet, which um, is a device used for, um, with, you know, for communication, where they've been caught with one of the sitters or the medium uh, had it on a pole and moving it around. And, and of course, they were caught because some of the sitters or the visitors weren't fooled by it. They'd seen physical mediumship many times and knew it was a fake. Yeah. So, and yeah, quite rightly so, these people need to be exposed. Unfortunately, it gives physical mediumship a very bad name because you're sitting in, and sometimes in complete darkness. So the question is, is how do I know? You know what the sitters say, how do we know, is that this is real. Um, um, and these charlatans will be around. Uh, the other part, part of this is physical mediums sometimes when, for whatever reason, are going through a very bad patch, whatever reason that might be, problems at home, they're just tired, they feel pressured to deliver, to, to deliver which is terrible. Because we always say that we cannot guarantee 
communication. It's not always up to us. It's up to them in spirit. Now, some people must say, oh, it's a get-out clause. But no, that's true. That is absolutely true. Now, when people have paid, oh, I don't know, some fee at the door, and have travelled, say, 200 miles for a special event, you know, that could last a couple of days, and to find that they've been probably told that the conditions are not correct for physical mediumship, people get very angry and bitter and very nasty towards the team, the, the sitters and the medium. And in my opinion, my I, I think that they should say um, that I don't feel well or it's not working and we need to suspend the circle. This is not going to work. And yeah, you'll be called left, right and centre for disappointing these people. But if these people were serious, if these people are professional and caring, they should say, OK, that's not a problem, we understand. <laughs> Unfortunately, when you open this to the public, they expect to see, they've paid in many cases to see this. So what happens is mediums feel trapped and then attempted to use fraudulent devices, fraud, which is very bad indeed, and that should not happen. And so sometimes some mediums get trapped in having to perf having to deliver. Yeah. A, I, I was going to say service as an awful thing, but to deliver something. So, um, and I I strongly believe, and I know the many mediums out there would say, if you don't feel right, if the energies are not right, if you're too tired and you know there's a problem, don't do it. Just stop and, you know, and it, you're true to yourself, true to spirit, and you're being honest to the people. Yeah. So they get what they, what they want. Really. That's right. But they should be told right at the beginning, prior to coming to the session, that it can't be guaranteed. A lot of things can happen that can destroy the energy or whatever. And it, it, it's not the sitter's fault. You know, some people might say, oh, it was me, I brought something back with me. But no, <laughs> yeah, no that. <laughs> that, yeah, and people get really worked up about it. It's not the case. It just, you know, it's just I had to stop. You know, I was, was going to get on best for you to, to say is that a uh, different question I propose is why is there's so little evidence at times when we when people nowadays want a scientific experiment, they want like um, a proper test, as it were, to demonstrate a psychic ability. Um, Sometimes the fraud either comes out, or the medium didn't work, and then they're just labelled as a week. Short yes. time waster. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Um, yes. What can I say to that? Um, I'd love to work with scientists. I I, I find them um, incredible. I they, they, I find them quite uplifting. Um, some are out to deliberately find a fault with you, yeah. uh, but a proper scientist should have an open mind yeah. and say, we're here to, okay, to the prove evidence. <laughs> the evidence, you know, we need to know, uh, we need to, is it measurable, is it observable, is it quantifiable, you know, we need to see that, and I'm a, I'm a scientist myself, and I know what they want, and, um, and yeah, some mediums, I mean, have, there's been cases where they're, they're probably fine. Uh, they give wonderful evidence, mediumship-wise, or whatever they do. When it comes to experiments, they're probably absolutely frightened or terrified. They're going to have things placed in them or whatever. And it's just not worked. And it's a shame when they've been labelled, uh, you know, dud or whatever. Yeah. I hope that never happens. But, you know, some, you know that's, that, that's, that's happened in the past. The other experiments, like the wavy lines, the stuff what they call the one with the stars and the cross. Yeah, I, what do you call them? It, it's actually a test. It's the psychic cards. Isn't yeah, it? psychic cards. I'd love to do that. I wish somebody buys me some. I'd love to have a go at that. I'd love to do that. Um, I'd like to experiment on yeah, some of you uh, with that. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you can experiment. Yeah, a little experiment. I find it quite actually, helpful. I've got a set of those cards at my house. Oh, well, fantastic. <laughs> well, I will buy them off you. <laughs> <laughs> Money, yeah, okay. There you go. Uh, no, no. Yeah, okay. But seriously, that I find that fascinates me. And um, yeah, the, the, I I truly believe there are people who have this psychic. Who have, the, there are people. There are psychics who can actually read 
what the card says on the opposite side. Fine, you know, they're out there, let's get, let's find them. I don't know what we're going to do with them, but you know, let's find them. The big people out there, the scientists need to measure this. Is it, they may say, oh, it was a coincidence, but if you get some that do it, say for example, did the test 20 times, they've got 18 out of 20. No, that's not yeah. Yeah, is that? The probability says. The probability says. But, I mean, it, we, even with the good chances of, you know, the chance, I should say, yeah. Even you've got 10 out of 20. That's yeah, good. that's good, but I'd like to see 20 out of 20. Yeah. You know, um, and that would make, convince me that I can read the card without fail. You know, that I'm reading it and my energy is reading that card and I can tell it immediately. That's, that's in my opinion, a, a good test. If you get 20 out of 20, then I think you've that's got right. to, yeah, don't let them out of your lab. You know, uh, well, it's, it's kind of good you to say that, obviously, we're discussing this. Um, the, the, the most common defense for a medium is, like, like you were saying a few minutes ago, is that I, I can't prove it now, just because obviously we're not in the right conditions or not yeah. in the right place. So, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Obviously, yes, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan's phrase. Uh, absolutely correct. And I totally agree with him. And, um, yeah, the late Carl Sagan. And, yeah, if you've got a, a claim, uh, it sounds amazing. Let's let's see it. Yeah. And um, I mean, if the skeptics are not, um, if you claim something and you publicly announce it, yeah, then you be prepared. That's right. Um, everyone uh, and their mother will be coming to have a look. Well, that's right. Um, but yes, I can understand where some mediums go. Oh well, the uh, the energies are not correct. Fine. But as long as they give a decent explanation about it, if they just say it because out of fear then people definitely become skeptic of them, skeptical of them, and, and this is what causes a problem with psychics and mediumship, uh, spiritualist mediumship. So it's, it's um, so if you've got a claim, be prepared to back it up. Yeah, exactly. As simple as that. I mean, we've had these so-called, we've had these mediums that, um, have said that they're going to perform something to prove these scientists wrong. The scientists are there, ready to test them, and then they said they pulled out because they've got a tummy bug. I, I'm afraid I'd be very, very worried about that uh, yeah. medium. And, um, and, you know, people need to be careful what they say. Yeah. I'm one of these, there should be, there'd be many mediums like me who just work in the background and just get the evidence. And if I can port an object from your house to here, and you know, I port an object through spirit to here, I would keep it to myself actually, just give it you back. And I'd say, there you go. And, uh, and that's it. Because it's kind of strange you actually mentioned before, see, I remember like, on my very first day I met you, uh, you were talking about how in the war, um, same on soaps are actually tra transport and Apple bread and uh, food from here to like the POW camps. That, that's correct. There is a, a case where a, a group of spiritualists, because in, in, before the 1950s you couldn't do this openly. Uh, it was a very, very cloak and dagger, this sort of thing, but it went on. And a group of like-minded people uh, bought bread and asked spirit to um, escort it and I bought it elsewhere um, in a concentration camp and um, it did go there and there's, there's another very very famous one which I need to explain where there is a, a fantastic physical medium is a, a a wonderful medium is here today um, is you know who's uh, told us that um, passing objects through walls is quite a common occurrence with spirit the physical medium, so you get a table from outside, literally passes through the wall and plonks itself in the middle of the circle uh, without anybody moving. And, and that is amazing because they can transmute energy. The other famous thing is that a medium had brought, uh, invited, a, a, I think it was a reporter, to attend a physical circle so that the reporter could observe at first hand what this was all about. And um, during the day, he arrived early afternoon and obviously spent uh, some time with the medium in the living room. With got um, 
and had a, a cup of tea and obviously had something to eat and chatting. And there were some curtains that were blowing slightly on a windy day, and they had a vase of flowers, uh, obviously full of water and so on. And the curtain caught it, and the vase went crashed to the floor, and the flowers went everywhere. And they picked all the, pot, all the bits and pieces, and, and the flowers, obviously put them in another vase. And suddenly realized, I said, oh, there's no water in this. Uh, we must, it must have been dry. Well, we're lucky then. And they carried on chatting. And then when it came to the seance, uh, all the sat sitters sat down with the reporter. They were just about to start, and all the water just went down and soaked the entire lot. So the spirit got all of the water and suspended it invisibly in the seance room. And that was recorded. It's fantastic. Oh, cool. I mean, the way of spirituality started in the physical mediumship, obviously, was the Fox Sisters. Yes. Uh, 1888, uh, Margaret first showed, along with the sister Kate and Leah, to, to everyone out in the public, all private um, sittings that they did, that taps and raps were being made in the room. But obviously, then spirituality grew and everyone started holding their own seances. So a bit later on, um, notoriety was going down and everyone was getting quite famous and people were getting ahead of the other one. Um, Margaret decided to show that it was actually her knuckles and her toes were actually making yeah. the sounds. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how does that go publicly? Because that, that's like the basis of physical mediumship. Yeah. And then the creator essentially then turns around and says, well, actually, we made it all up. Yeah, well, what sort of mood was she in then? No, of course. See, that's not recorded. So why did she say that? Um, I think Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wrote in one of his books. Um, he says he thought that was discounted um, because there was a lot of evidence. There was a lot of independent witnesses that were actually at Hydeville to witness and, uh, the events that took place 1848 and, of course, March the 31st when it all started there. Yeah. So what happened afterwards? How do we know what happened to the girls? Did they get sick and tired of the public performances? That's not recorded. So when she said she snapped her uh, feet, uh, uh, you know, uh, perhaps she must have cracked the yeah. foot, the toe onto the floor, um, right, do we know that that's true? Did she say it because she got, you know, she had a bad day or what? Um, if she did, well, that's a shame. Um, there's nothing we can do about it now. The thing is, there were many things that went on that were evidential, that were recorded by various groups, various people of various professions, and they actually saw it. Um, so I don't, why she said that, I have no idea. I well, mentioned earlier about the, um, the Mediumship Act changed, obviously, back last a couple of years ago now. That's right. And it became the, um, there's the Witchcraft Act back in the old days, and it obviously right. became the Fraudulent Mediums Act. That's right. And then obviously now it's become the Consumer Protection for the Unfair Trade and Regulations 2007 Order. Right. Um, what, what do you think about that move? Because a lot of mediums are really like, oh no, <laughs> what do we do now? We're now kind of labelled in the same one as like, cowboy window cleaners and stuff. <laughs> cowboy window fitters rather than well, it, um, apparently the UK was the only country that wasn't covered by it. Uh, apparently in Europe it was there, it was in place. And the European law, the EU, we had to fall into line. So it's, it had to be done. Um, I personally think it was the best thing that's ever happened. Um, now, we have to be careful now because uh, when people is given a sitting, a reading, I should say, we ask them to sign a disclaimer to say that this is done at their it's request. An yeah, and it's an experiment. They may feel, see, hear things that they're not, they haven't felt before or whatever, experienced before, and that, you know, if they're taking medical uh, Medicine, medicines and everything, they've done this of their own free will, and they're fully aware of what they're doing. And then they sign this disclaimer with the medium, and then both have a copy of it, which should be done that way. The, the other thing about um, charging, it's all because of this charging for the services of the medium. Um, and um, many mediums, uh, there are good mediums and there are not so good mediums. Um, and it reflects in the rates at which they charge. Some mediums charge up to £800, you know, because there is a people that will pay that, you know, these are famous people. And some mediums um, will only charge the time, or certainly the petrol money, if they've had to travel somewhere to give a reading, which some mediums do. So if it's done in a, you know, a proper manner, if it's done in a 
sensible way, and it's charged at a rate that, um, you know, is comfortable, um, then that's fine. Because if, it, if they didn't charge at all, there'd be a queue around the block. That's right, yeah. Because that's what would happen. But free, free service come free here. Free service, that's it. So, um, there was also some mediums that were quite clearly abusing the system would um, give a tidbit of information, I can't say that, so a, a little bit of information of saying uh, to someone, well, if you come back next week, I'll have more information about your loved one if he's playing around behind your back. And, you know, it'd be £300, pound though. Uh, you know, we're actually using the fear, using a, a, a sitter's fear um, to, make them come back. to make them come back. That is vile. That is morally incorrect, and those people deserve to be arrested. Um, and that is not evidence saying stuff, of, uh, you know, finding things out about someone else at their detriment. You know, that is not evidence. That is that is vile. That is not even mediumship. Um, and you, you're defeating the object. And I'm glad that this law was passed. I'm very pleased about it. And it should these phone psychics. Although some of them are good, the majority is just a service, and it's basically uh, they are now strictly recognised. I'm not sure if they're still going because I've never tried one. No, I, I do see them obviously you, you flip through chat or whatever, and you see listen, talk to an astrologer, talk to a clairvoyant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite interesting. You often see like the very small print at the bottom. If you are a medium, please call us, and we can put you. Yeah. yeah. The, the the way to get some people get around it because it is entertainment purposes only. That's right. Yeah, that's obviously what you see. Or from some TV shows there, like that's that. right, which to me upsets me. Yeah, it upsets me too. Yeah, yeah because I do this because I'm, I'm trying to prove existence of your soul, you know, it lives on after physical death. So um, it is annoying to see that, but unfortunately, there's been many mediums out there that have been very deceitful that have made this happen. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm all for it. So, I mean, you talked about just TV shows right there. Um, Spiritualism over the past 10 years or so has got a major resurgence. Um, TV, the media, obviously, is driving that. I mean, do yes. you think it's a good thing? Um, I've got mixed views about it. Um, and although I can't name the various shows, there's some shows that, shall we say, that when they first started were very good. They did an investigation of some paranormal event and it looked quite scientific and refreshing and put a very good view on the investigation of these, uh, these you know, the paranormal events. However, as they've developed and gone on, more of the entertainment has gone into it. And so we see films, see, uh, we see uh, programs that say that uh, we're looking for evil spirits, evil this, evil that. So that's really uh, putting a very bad side on work, spiritualism generally, because people find it, the fact evil means it must all be bad. The person in the street doesn't know any different. So they just believe what they see on television, and people like to be afraid. Yeah, they do. They get, they pass it as, it's an adrenaline rush, and they find it amusing when a group of girls and men, for that matter, and boys, scream their heads off because it's amusing, it's funny to watch, and people will pay that. So, now then, however, on the opposite side of that, there are some programs that work very hard to get the evidence through. Now, there are some mediums who I've seen, I've met personally, and obviously their, their path has taken them on to bigger things with the media, and have done very, very well out of it, and they uh, do give the evidence and, um, and can link in and give you that. Yeah, that's what it is, Spirit, spiritualist mediumship, is giving that evidence. Because um, I'd say, uh, like, I can like write here really, as uh, regards to my notes, is there's quite a lot of shows of it, like nowadays, you've got like Afterlife, which obviously is yeah. now on TV, there's Medium Ghost Whisperer, which actually don't feature it in a in a bad light, it's kind of like, it shows the medium. Yeah, I, I saw that for the very first time over the weekend, because it was shown in Germany. Oh, was it? What, 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 it was this, the Scottish guy. Uh, 
Yeah, I think, I think that's uh, Og uh, Ogilvy or something. David Ogilvy. I can't say I saw. I've seen it all personally. Uh, Ghost it? Whisperer is that one with um, that, that was very much a very un American style. Oh, sorry, I don't know. That's okay. A medium obviously it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is the only all I can say about for media is it's brought it to the attention of the public. Um, whereas as we know that the orthodox religions have suppressed it, this is my opinion again, so that they control the public to actually go to church by classing everything else as evil. Yeah. Everything you see evil, that tin of chocolates though is evil. Whatever they literally because we weren't very bright, let's go back hundreds and hundreds of years ago, medieval times, we many of us didn't have an education. And therefore they put the fear of Everything else into us. Yeah, everything else into us in order to support the church. Of course, that's in that's why it's it's into us. us now, yeah. That's right, which is ridiculous. Well, we have to say, you know, just just talk about I went to a church not too long ago. Um, it, I can't really say what, what church it was because it wouldn't be right to say that. But uh, I, I was invited to go along and see, it, and apparently um, the, the priest, the vicar, said he was a guest. He came along. He essentially would, would touch people, and then we'd go into a fit on the floor and. Um, and then jump up and like the power of Jesus was in them and it was all love and light. But it was very much like a, it was very much a power thing. The, the vicar, the guest had the power over the people. And he very much, he believed he was channeling God or a God. And he had power over all these people and everyone was there to like, and he would, but he, what he was talking about was fear. He was talking about how the world was going to end, how, um, how you were being controlled by everybody else. When actually, in fact, they were being he was the one controlling yes, the people. Right, yes. And I was like, Anyway, so what's actually happened is when it touches them, they're, oh my god, it feels so good, I'm not controlled by fear. And that's what sends them into this frenzy of like, yeah, that's right. yeah. Like, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah. That is just, um, I'd love to send some psychi uh, um, uh, psychologist. psychologist there. I'd really would. I'd love to just sit with them and observe something like that and just, but they would never share their points of view with me, but I would love just to go and just watch their faces. Um, and I'm sorry, you've just you've you've stated something that's obvious. But as regards the the media, yeah, it's done some good. Unfortunately, I, I see now it's deteriorated into the some of it's just literally is entertainment now, and um, and it makes my skin crawl. It really does. And uh, I only feel sorry for the people that are running these programs if they only knew what they were doing. If they only knew, and um, if they're just respectful, as many people who have been here to my house have seen communication with spirit, what a wonderful way of the love and the respect, the evidence that's come through, and the support, and the love and support both from spirit and from us as a group of caring people is just overwhelming. It's just wonderful. People feel better. We don't push anything, we don't try and convert people, we just say just be yourself, you so are let the evidence talk for itself. Yes, that's right. So, we, you know, and on my recent trip to Germany, uh, that's exactly what happened. It was just done simply. So talking about respectful, how to go through it the right way, if you were to advise someone to go to develop into mediumship, they've got the idea they want to learn, what, where, where would they go, what would they do? How, how do they go along those lines? Do they, do they, I say, I mean, what I mean is, like, no, if you were to advise someone um, for the best course in their life, really, what would they go? Is it? Uh, you've asked a very, very good question. You've actually got caught me out there. The I would su suggest a spiritual centre. Unfortunately, uh, many, for example, the churches, you need to be an associate or full member of the church before they allow you to become a, a member of a circle. And then you're at the mercy of whatever tutors there, and they may be good and they may be very bad. So um, the other thing is, is uh, to answer to your question, is mediums of reputation. Now, I mean, you're doing this interview and yeah. so on, so that obviously this will be in the public. But how do you get that information out? How do you, and what sort of waiting, but what sort of, Time scales. Time scales that we're talking about. So it's getting yourself noticed. Now there are various organisations, spiritualist organisations, that provide training and so on, and a high quality uh, training. 
also to not only to link with spirit, but also to link to, to work with the public, which obviously I teach yeah. both aspects of. But um, but it's the thing is is <laughs> um, you're not the mercy. Um, you're you're being influenced by the tutor and the people, the group of people that you're with, and their ideals, essentially. And their ideals, yeah. So, out of say, for example, a group of ten, you may find there'll be two or three that will make it towards to be a script, a proper spiritualist medium. The rest will either fall aside to be psychics or sitters or whatever, not to belittle them. But no, that's I don't, I don't the way it is. Say, yeah. Um, so to answer to your question is how does one go about so, it? I don't obviously understand that there's um, like unions in the UK and obviously the world that have yes. development circles where you can That's right. pay a small fee and you come along. And That's right. I mean, is, that, is that a good step perhaps? It rather, is a good step. going to one is try a few and you, yeah. you know what works and you don't yeah, yes, yes. Um, my, my advice is, is to, um, it, I'll tell you what would be a good idea if there was like some network of list of good groups where there's positive feedback on these groups. The problem is, is people's development may take years. Of course, yeah. So, it, uh, and then people fall out, people squabble because we're human. That's what we do, we squabble. You know, we come and we're in a bad mood, we sit next to someone, there's a smell and we, you know, decide to fight. And, you know, people yak, 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 and, and, and then people want feel fancies one or whatever. Yeah. It all happens because we're human, we've got this animal instinct. I know, but we're trying to link in spiritually, and many groups I've seen, not mine, I'd like to add, have fallen into some slanging match and then have disbanded. Yeah. Because if somebody's got either an ulterior motive or just not spiritual at all. So the answer to your question is, is, um, um, is through reputation. And I, I cannot be any specific than that, either through a church or through an organisation where a name is well known. Let's do your research first, basically. Yeah. Just go it along. could be that the person who wishes to develop may have to try a few circles until they find one that's that's okay for them. The book needs to push them. They can't just sit back and say, I'm a medium because I've described a parrot from 1780 to you. Yeah. That's not mediumship, that's just bizarre. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you know, that is entertainment. Um, so somebody needs to, and that's happened, by the way, and um, yeah, to that we need to. You need to find a group where shoot that's going to push you all the time, get on your nerves basically, but needs that quality from you. So these, I'm afraid, the person answering your question, the person who wants this group, has got a lot of searching, and I wish I could help them. But getting that information out there is difficult. Yeah, and then it's managing it. Yeah, of course. So. Um, Maybe a special message to those listening on our website and where else this is going to be heard from. Okay. Is there any messages you want to be? Uh, no, I kind of just say um, there's those of those people who wish to be to to train as mediums. My best advice to them is just be themselves. Try not to copy another medium. We're all different. Every, including the people in this room. Every single one of us is completely unique. And if you have a belief in God or not, every one of you is special. And every one, I believe, is capable of working for spirit in some form, whether through healing, psychic link even. I'm, I'm not going to go to psychics. They've got, a, they've got a purpose. Spiritualist medium, astral travel, whatever. Remote viewing, whatever. Everyone can work with spirit. It could be inspirational writing. It could be, um, it could be anything like that. There are many, many ways of working with spirit. Every one is unique. To all of those who are going to read this, is um, believe in yourself. Have good self-esteem. Although ego is important, have ego, or she won't learn anything. But being egotistical is very bad indeed, and we don't go there. But just say to them to have an open mind and an open heart. And I hope that what I've said makes sense and that it makes people investigate or certainly check the possibility of joining a group. 
Yeah, but can I just say that people like yourselves that have come here today, um, and, and I know this has been a long time in planning, yeah. uh, can I just say I wish you all the very best with you, um, the publication of this, whatever it is. And um, I hope that um, this hopefully would start paths, spiritual paths for many who read this and want to really seriously investigate and become a fully professional, proper medium that's of the highest calibre.